For this problem, we have a sample of people, 950 of them, and we gave them a drug. And 25 of them report that they have flu-like symptoms, and 25 out of 950, so that's about 2.6% of them reported flu-like symptoms. Now, with these other drugs, we're comparing this, we're comparing this drug to the other drugs out there, competing drugs. Those drugs only give 1.6% of people flu-like symptoms. So our assumption was that our drug would be the same. And our alternative hypothesis is that our drug actually gives more than 1.6% of people flu-like symptoms. Now, based off of just looking at what came back from our sample, it looks like our alternative is going to be true because our sample gave 2.6%, which is quite a bit higher than 1.6%. So we're going to actually let StatCrunch do the calculations and determine if we really should reject the null or not, if it was significant enough. But just looking at the results, I'm inclined to say that we are going to reject. And to actually officially reject the null hypothesis, we need to look at, we have to just come up with an alpha, and the people running this experiment said alpha was 5%, 0.05. So what that means is if our sample, this sample that we took, is only 5% likely to occur, so it's so far off the norm that it only would happen 5% of the time. Because if you think about it, every single sample you get is going to be different. Some will have 25 people get flu-like symptoms. Some will have 50. Some will have zero. Some would have two. Every sample is going to be different. If our sample, having 25 out of 950, was very unlikely. It's only going to happen 5% of the time that that many people get it because that's quite a bit of people if we only expect 1.6 to get it, 1.6%. So if this is in the 5% club, it's 5% unlikely, that's when we're going to reject the null. So Stack Crunch is going to give us the value, the probability value of getting the sample that we did. We just need to go to Stack proportions. We have one sample here and we have the summary data. We don't have columns of information. We just have the summary that there were 25 people with flu-like symptoms out of 950. And we're running our um, hypothesis test. We assumed that it was going to be 1.6% and we're testing to see if we actually are in the 5% club of people having more than 1.6%. And so if we let StatCrunch do, the, do all the work there for us, we just look at the p-value that comes back. And this is 0 0.0056. So this is less than 1%. So this sample, this particular sample, getting 25 out of 950 is very, very unlikely. That's going to happen less than 1% of the time. It's going to happen 0.56% of the time. So less than 1%. That's very unlikely to get a sample like that. So we're going to con our conclusion is going to be that since that sample is so rare, we don't think that we got a rare sample. What we think is our assumption was wrong, that this drug is actually going to produce a lot more samples like this with 2.6% or 3% or 2%, but a lot more samples higher than this. We think that's more likely than that we got such a rare sample. So since we think it's more likely that this number was wrong, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the alternative is true.